What's going on guys, Andrew Pilikaki here back again with another video. It has been some time and I apologize, but I needed a mental health break from making YouTube videos all the time. Uh, I was posting so much, I have multiple YouTube channels, uh, so that's where I've been. And uh, I have been watching uh, the Leafs, you know, there have been some games that I've missed. I've been working a ton, but I go back and I watch all the highlights and I go back and I watch specific clips that people have been talking about from the night before. But I do go back and watch the games. Also, you're probably noticing I am wearing the Leafs reverse retro jersey. Um, this was a jersey that a lot of people didn't like, including myself. But when I seen it in person, I actually really liked it. I didn't really agree with people saying about the quality and stuff, but I will um, talk about that because I was also one of those people uh, who didn't like the quality at first, but I do have an explanation on that. Um, but yeah, that's not the point of this video. There has been a ton of rumors regarding the Toronto Maple Leafs, and this is what I do. I've been making these rumor videos for years and years now. Uh, you can go back and check my channel. I was one of the first people doing it uh, in terms of YouTube-wise. A lot of people told me not to, but I did. And uh, it I mean, it works for a lot of people, but uh, I, I really love doing this stuff, and I want to get back to the videos that I enjoy making. And this is something that I've wanted to do for a few weeks now, but I needed this break. The Toronto Maple Leafs are first currently as I'm making this video in the Canadian division. They're also first in the NHL, I believe still by uh, points and points percentage. And it's been fun to watch. There's so many exciting things to talk about. But when you have a team that's so good, there's always that thought in the back of your head. Can this team take another step and acquire another player? Can they acquire multiple players? Now, people are probably looking at their cap situation and going, you are nuts. How are they supposed to do this? Well, there's going to have to be a lot of cap management. There's going to have to be a lot of moving parts. It could involve trading an Alex Kerfoot. It could involve trading a Pierre Engvall, and it could involve trading a Jimmy VC or all three of them, maybe two of them, maybe just one of them. It depends on how many players you can acquire and uh, if it makes sense for the team. It's a video that I want to make in itself as well, um, but I will briefly talk about it now that the Toronto Maple Leafs are in a unique spot that they haven't been in in a few years. Of course, this team has been very good. We've seen the pieces. We, we've we we've seen just how good they are and what they're capable of. But they didn't have that like you they didn't have that look where you're like, damn, this team literally is a juggernaut. This team could win the Stanley Cup. You know what I mean? And there are a lot of really good teams in the NHL, but Toronto is one of those teams. They have the potential to make you think that this team could win the Stanley Cup. And while I do like this roster and it isn't fully healthy right now, they can still acquire pieces. They still can make this team better. They can make it deeper. And that's what teams do. Look at what Tampa did. You know, they just went out there and acquired guys that they felt could push them over the edge, even though they were already a juggernaut. And that's what the Leafs can do for themselves here. So if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, let's get right into this. So Elliot Freeman brought up some mystery players, uh, and that ended up being uh, Mikael Granlin um, from the Nashville Predators, who haven't been having a very good season. He also brought up the name Eric Stahl, or I believe Chris Johnston might have brought up that name. There's been a few names brought up by a few different reporters, but we all have heard them. If you have social media, if you have YouTube, you've heard just about everybody talk about these guys. Now, let's just look into these guys quickly before we get any further. So um, right now I'm on Cap Friendly. You see Eric Stahl of the Buffalo Sabres. Now, Buffalo, again, just isn't having a good season. As a team, they're not uh, you know, playing very well. This cap hit will probably scare some people away. Now, you've probably heard it from just about every reporter in the books. Um, Elliot Friedman, Pierre Lebrun, Chris Johnston. Uh, you've even probably heard it on YouTube from guys like Steve Dangle, Adam Wild, um, Downtown Stephen Brown. Make sure to go subscribe to him. But once the NHL trade deadline comes around, salary caps uh, and, and, and everything like that, the numbers change. And that's, that's another video that I want to make. But like... They, they change, you know what I mean? It's not really, it's, it's really technical, but there's a lot of pro rating and numbers going on. Uh, and, and, you know, you can you can make teams require some money and that's what I'm going to get to, uh, or sorry, retain, not require, retain some money uh, in order to acquire a player. Don't worry, we'll get into it into in a second and in separate videos, but just know that the Leafs can make this work with trades uh, and the way that the salary cap will work towards the NHL trade deadline. So, Eric Stahl would definitely be a good depth piece. The guy is really good on the fa in the faceoff dot. I believe he's at 51% this year. 
uh, fact check me, but I believe he's over 50%. And I believe that number is 51%. That cap hit, like I said, 3.25 million. Uh, it'll scare some people away, but I don't think it's that big of a deal considering I would make Buffalo eat half of that uh, money. And uh, you could find uh, pieces to go the other way that would benefit Buffalo uh, and make them want to make this trade for sure. So the age 36 there, uh, if you recall listening to an Eric Stahl interview when he was talking about getting moved over uh, to Buffalo, he said that he still felt like he was, you know, in his 20s and that this age didn't really define him. And I, I mean, look at a guy like Jason Spezza, like look at the goal he scored last night, just absolutely vintage, you know what I mean? So you, you can believe that for sure. So he does have the um, the modified no trade clause here. Uh, I would imagine he would want to go to a contender, and especially the way the Leafs are playing this year, I, I would think he would want to come and play in Toronto, but that's just hypothetical. That's just me talking. You never know. Uh, but let's just look at his numbers here. We're going to scroll all the way down. Uh, with Buffalo this year, like I said, they're, they're not playing that well as a team, but in, he has eight points in 17 games played, uh, but he does bring that veteran leadership. He does have the cup uh, champion in his blood. He is, does have a history of being a winner. Uh, so I would I would ignore some of these numbers. I mean, the minuses, that, that doesn't always mean everything. It's a weird stat, but eight points in 17 games played on a team that's not very good. I'll take this any day, especially since he'd probably be playing on a much deeper Toronto team. And by probably, I mean definitely, because they are definitely uh, much better than uh, the Buffalo Sabres. And I know some Sabres fans might really hate to hear that, but let's just jump over. You guys can see some other tabs here, but let's just jump over to Cap Friendly here. So I made a couple moves and this is how it would work out if you got a guy like Eric Stahl. You would, they would have to retain some, um, some money here. So he'd be coming to the Leafs probably a, a little bit less than what you're seeing this number here just because of how the salary cap will work. Closer to the, I believe, April 11th trade deadline. Uh, again, I have to look into those numbers. But I have Robertson up here. You can make moves. You, you don't have to have Robertson here. You could have somebody else here. But you'll notice that there's no Jimmy VC and that there's um, there's no Pierre Engvall. So those guys would be moved out in, in this equation. This is what the taxi squad would probably look like. Uh, again, Galchenya could be into this equation, which would bump out somebody more than likely Robertson uh, and move a Mikheyev up, and and you can move stuff around here. Uh, and we won't get into the exact trades, um, but you would definitely find guys um, to 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 move out to to bring in a guy like Eric Stahl uh, and and Engvall and VC probably are the guys that you would have to trade. Uh, because I don't think the Leafs are going to want to have a fourth line like this, but you're also not going to sit Spezza and Thornton. I think they like having both those guys in the lineup, especially Spezza. He's played uh, very, very well still. The the guy just looks like he doesn't age sometimes, uh, but you, you still have Kerfoot here. Now, we will get to that in a minute, because if you want to make another addition to this team, you could move Kerfoot up and have him in that in that top six and, and just maybe grab another winger down here. Or maybe you don't get Eric Stahl. You keep Kerfoot at that third line center and you upgrade another winger. There's so many different possibilities. Uh, and one of those names that was brought up could be the mystery winger. Uh, and that's Mikhail Granlund. So we will jump over to him here in a second. Uh, so this is this is what I wanted to look at here. So $3.75 million cap hit. Again, once you get closer to that deadline, this number will look different. Plus, you would have to get them to retain some salary, which would make the Leafs trade package a little bit stronger. Now, uh, still 29 years old, not like not a guy that does a lot of things at like a crazy, you know, amazing or elite level. He just does a lot of things that's good. And with the Predators this year, again, kind of the same situation. They're not a great team, uh, but he does have nine points in 16 games played. And, uh, you know, he, he does a lot of little things that maybe aren't working out, but he does have that offensive ability that he could definitely go back to because he does kill penalties, although he hasn't been the greatest penalty killer from what I've looked into um, the last season and or so, like last two seasons, um, basically since coming over to Nashville. I don't think he's had the best numbers when it comes to being a penalty killer, but the Leafs do have a good amount of guys that already fill that role, so he wouldn't have to do that. But if you look at his offensive uh, abilities, uh, going back to the 17-18 season, 67 points, and then even this 18-19 season at 49 points. 
30 points in 63 games played isn't exactly the numbers that you want to see from him. But playing with guys like Nylander, Tavares, you, you never know who he would be playing with. Maybe he gets some looks with Marner and Matthews. Those guys will definitely improve those numbers. But if you've watched him play at all, and I'm sure if you're if you're a hockey fan, you've seen Granlin play. He is very offensive minded. He's not the type of guy where you're going to throw into um, a defensive position uh, on, uh, on the ice when you can have him playing more offensive minutes, uh, playing him in, in, in the offensive zone more. That, that's definitely where you want that guy. And again, like I said, he does do some good things in his own zone too. But when you have guys like Mikheyev or Hyman, and maybe you bring in an Eric Stahl as well, you know, Simmons, whatever, like you want those guys facing the, the gritty, you know, the tougher lines, the, the guys that you're trying to shut down a little bit. You want guys that do that. You want guys that, that that's what they do. You want them to play uh, against defensive matchups. And even Kerfoot. You know, sometimes he gets flack, but like he's actually not the worst defensively. I mean, he he has a history when he was, especially when he was in Colorado, of being a pretty good defensive third line center or a second line center for some teams. But I, I do like the idea of having Hyman out of the top six for that uh, bottom six as well for the defensive matchups. But I also like Hyman a lot in the top six. So there's diff there's definitely a lot of things that you can move around. But Granlin is an interesting option. But this brings us to Kerfoot because this is a guy that if you're going to acquire multiple pieces, if you're going to bring in a Granlin, if you're going to bring in a Stall or anybody else at a higher cap hit, you're going to have to trade Kerfoot. There's definitely an opportunity here to trade this guy. But I, I'm not really sold on moving Kerfoot, especially if you can bring in an Eric Stahl uh, and, and maybe keep Kerfoot in that top six because he does look good when he plays with uh, Tavares and Nylander. So 11 points in 22 games played. Um, but he just looks like a different player when, he, when he's not playing the center position. Although I'm not one of these people that just completely negates what he does at 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 the faceoff dot, I just think he's more suited on this team as a winger, uh, and, and I'm sure that you could hear that from a lot of different people. It's been brought up on uh, different, you know, TSN or Sportsnet radio shows. I, I tend to listen to those a lot now, uh, which I didn't really do before. But maybe maybe that's maybe that's something I should do more often. But uh, whenever I miss a, a game or if I miss the third period or something, I make sure to tune in uh, to hear maybe what other people are thinking, not just Twitter, because Twitter. Is, is the reason why sometimes you need a mental health break. But um, definitely there's a ton of options. But in terms of who I think is a fit, you know, you're looking at a Granlin, you're looking at a Stall or anybody in that price range. I know um, downtown Stephen Brown has been on the Tanner Pearson train, uh, which, I mean, hey, if he can, you know, get into the dirty areas and, and play a similar role to Zach Hyman, I mean, that could work too. So, a lot of things to think about. Let me know down below what you guys think. And uh, wow, this video is a lot longer than I thought it was. So I do apologize if I dragged on too long. But if you are new, make sure to subscribe. And uh, thank you guys for coming back to this channel. And uh, more is on the way. Peace.